Okay, well, welcome to the first tutorial about how we're going to create a tic-tac-toe. Um, first, we're going to start by analyzing the rules. And here we've got the basic tic-tac-toe rules of two players. Uh, players being the first object, cell and grid being other objects of the game. Where we place a, a cross and a naught in each of the cells of the grid. And the actual action is a move in this case. So this is kind of highlighted by the verbs in the description. And other than that, we might have something like a sign up for the player, which would be a step before the game. So we might just ignore that for now. The other thing we can look for too is also the states of the game. In this case, we have a winning state, a uh, draw state, and there's also just an in-game playing state. So they're the main ones we're going to look at. And also the fact that you might lose the game as well would be another state to consider. Now there also might be a type of player as well, so we might have the X player and the O player. And we might also assume certain rules in this case that the X player always is the one that starts the game, therefore the X goes first, followed by the naught, and at the end of the game if there was a draw, there would be five uh, crosses and four noughts. Now in doing this we might then quickly just move on to creating a few objects, like a player object, and a game object. So these are probably the two main objects for this simple game. And uh, remember with design, we're trying to create simplicity and hopefully make the implementation easier for us. So here we've got the player and we might just have their play name. With the game, we want things like the grid, which would have the cell states and the X and zeros uh, within each cell. So that might be a, a simple way to look at it so far. So with this understanding, we might just link those together to actually um, go between the player and the game. We might have a thing like a, uh, firstly a sign up to get to the kind of player object and then a move which a player might apply to a game. And so this just gives us a quick overview from that definition. Now with that, another way to start looking at it is maybe in a form of a screen layout. And here I'm just going to probably be able to address this problem in two web pages. So I'm going to start with the index PHP and and then we're going to have uh, some sort of play PHP which will have the main game stuff. So in the index we've, we've got this issue with the sign up so we might need a basic uh, form elements to sign up. So we'll just need a, some sort of submit and after we've got the submit we're going to need um, an area for the user to enter their name. And for the sake of this example, we'll keep it simple. And um, for this layout design, we'll, we'll enter the name. And the name might just, you know, in the background, check the database for that name. If the person exists, we'll, we'll uh, use them and see if you've got an existing game, um, game state. And if not, we'll just create them straight away and get them straight into the game. So this would be the first index PHP form. So this is basically a screen layout uh, design. It's not a screen design, so it's not aiming for the final visual uh, image. It's just giving you a feel for what component tree would be needed on the page and, and how it'd be laid out. So now we've got the first page the user would come to when they first visit the site. The next one is to actually then create the playing the game page. And so in this case, once they've signed in, we might present them with a grid straight away um, that they could cl uh, click on to place uh, their X in this case, because if they're going to start a new game, they're going to be player X. And here I'm just going to create this grid quickly. And uh, once we've got that, we've then basically got the way our uh, game page might look. Okay, so with this now, we're going to then give it a title as well. And with some of the layouts, you can also uh, start tagging these layouts to certain styles as well, so that uh, this can map through to things like your CSS sheet, uh, for instance, or, or other resources used by uh, the artist. Okay, so the next stage is actually once you're in a game, uh, so we're, we're doing the next step, the player is actually clicked on one of the cells, and now we're going between the play page again and again, and it's just, again, another move um, being applied in this case. So with this move, we're going from a new game to a game where it's got an element clicked on. 
And we actually now, because we're in game, we will actually create some sort of key. And here we've got the key, which will give uh, your name and the other player's name. Now, with the other player, it would obviously be blank until someone actually joins the game. So that's something to consider. But really, we don't need to show that. Continuing on this, uh, we would actually might change the new game screen that uh, when a player clicks uh, and joins us, they might actually go in and not just see a new game they can click on, but also waiting games as well. So this uh, would actually make that first page more usable. We could list the any number of waiting games where a player's uh, done the first move and waiting for someone else to join and do the second move. So the next part then, and the final part is going where the move actually creates the winning state. So when we're in the game, we only want to display one grid, which is the grid they're playing with. And then now when they've actually uh, got a winning state, we actually then want to go ahead and uh, highlight the fact that they've won. And again, uh, for the sake of uh, usability or, or being able to allow the user to quickly progress, once they've got the winning game state, we could actually then again display another new game grid below. Um, and then also display awaiting games that other people are triggered. So again, uh, we've got the functionality of the first new page that we come to, uh, but we've also got kind of this end game state that uh, we've got to display to show them that they've actually won, lost, or drawn the game. Okay, and this would be another important factor to ensure we've got on the web page. And uh, so with you can see with the screen layouts that we're actually capturing a lot of information uh, about what we're actually going to need in our underlying controller class, our tic-tac-toe class, and also uh, possible information we're going to need to store in the database as well. So it's, it's not a bad place to start sometimes to get a feel for how the product might work and, and how it would flow from one page to another and the types of functionality you might want to give the user to make it easy. So you see here we've gone quickly from a description, uh, highlighted some basic objects, and here we've got a, a basic play, a page layout and a flow through the game. And uh, so now um, we're, ba we're basically moving closer to actually designing the product uh, in more detail. And things like here we can go through and just make sure we've got things tidied up like uh, a playing game rather than a new game once we've clicked on things. So, Things like that we can tidy up.